Hello guys, I am engineer Muhammad Adnan Khan and you are watching my YouTube channel Being Engineer. In this video lecture, we will learn about the maximus and minimus for slab reinforcement. It means that what maximum size of the bar that can be used in a slab or what is the maximum spacing or minimum spacing between individual bars that can be provided in a slab. These are the important points to be kept in mind for slab reinforcement. We will discuss main bar, distribution bar, effective depth and maximum and minimum spacing between individual bars. Before we start our topic, if you are new to my channel, you are requested to please subscribe it and press the bell icon so that you can get my latest videos. So let's get started. Types of bars. There are actually two types of bars in slab. Number one is main bar. What is main bar and what is its purpose? The purpose of the main bar is to transfer the bending load developed at the bottom of the slab to the beams. Here we have a slab. The bars you see in red colors are called as main bars and these are placed at the bottom of the slab because these, these bars are mainly responsible for carrying load and transferring it to the beams. Main bars are slightly stronger or higher in dimensions as compared to distribution bars as I mentioned before these bars are responsible for carrying loads. Main bars are placed at the shorter direction. The shorter direction is 3.5 meter and the bars are placed along the shorter span of the slab. The other type of bar is distribution bar. Distribution bars are used to resist the shear stress and cracks developed in the longer span. Distribution bars are placed perpendicularly on top of the main bars. As you can see in this diagram, the one you see in blue color are the distribution bars and these bars are placed perpendicularly on top of the main bars. Lesser dimensions of bars are used since it is only to resist the cracks developed due to the shear stress on top of the slab. Distribution bars are, are of lesser dimensions as compared to main bars because these bars are only responsible to resist shear cracks developed on the top of the slab. And these bars are placed at longer directions as the longer direction is 5 meter and these bars are placed along the longer dimensions. Here is the cross section of the slab. The bent of bar or the straight bar you see in this cross section is the main bar and the bars in the form of dots is the distribution bars which are placed perpendicularly above the main bars. So what is the maximum dia of bar that can be used in the slab? The maximum dia of bar used in slab should not exceed 1 by 8 of total thickness of the slab. For example, if we have a slab and its thickness is 6 inches, that is 152.4 mm. Dividing it by 8, we will get 19.05 mm. So this is the maximum value of dia of bar that can be used in 6 inch thick slab. For main bars, maximum spacing is restricted to 3 times effective depth or 300 mm whichever is smaller. So what is effective depth? Effective depth is equal to depth of slab minus clear cover minus half of dia of the bar. For example, we have a slab, its thickness is 6 inches or 152.4 mm. Its effective depth will be depth of slab that is 154.4 152.4 minus 30. 30 is the clear cover which is usually provided in flat slabs minus half of dia of bar. If we are using 12 mm diameter, it's multiplied by 1 by 2 or 0 0.5, we will get 116.4 and multiplying it by 3, that is 3 times, we will get 349.2 mm. So this is the maximum spacing that can be provided between main bars or 300 mm whichever is smaller. Here 300 mm is smaller. So this is the maximum spacing that can be provided 
in a slab which is 6 inches thick or 152.4 mm thick. For distribution bars, the maximum spacing is specified as 5 times the effective depth. Similarly, we will multiply it by 5. And dia of bar, if we, we are using the same dia of bar, it will remain same. Or if we, as we mentioned before, the dia of distribution bar is comparatively less than dia of main bars, so it can vary. So similarly we can calculate the maximum spacing for distribution bars the next point is minimum spacing between individual bars what is the minimum spacing that can be provided between the individual bars the minimum spacing depends upon the size of the aggregate as we know there are different size of aggregates that is used in concrete the maximum spacing between two bars should be equal to 5 mm more than the nominal maximum size of the pore aggregate. Now we see there are typically 20 mm size of aggregate is used in construction. If we are using 20 mm size of aggregate, if we are using 20 mm size of aggregate, the minimum spacing should be 20 plus 5 mm. 25 mm should be the minimum spacing between the individual bars and large size 40 mm size of aggregate is more common in mass concrete. So that's all for today. You are again requested if you are not subscribed to my channel please subscribe it and press the bell icon so that you can get my latest videos.